to the party. I'm up to Molly to Zane and Lean, that's why I'm moving retarded. Right, yo, that's why I'm moving retarded. Right, left, right, and then left. With a foolish friend was a fuck. Can't left the friend you We, we with the nine. You got signing comment, welcome to the time. party. You shot it, nigga? Right. Welcome to the party. Oh, you gave bitches? Welcome to the party. From Canarsie, Brooklyn. Where we get you more. with a string of gun violence across the country this weekend. Between Friday and Sunday, at least 10 cities reported mass shootings. Those are shootings with four or more victims. People want... Dallas rapper was murdered outside of his car on I-35 near the Dallas Zoo. Hello, I'm Steve Eager. I'm Heather Hayes. It is a stark example of the city's struggle to control violent crime. Police say the victim, a hip-hop musician named Mo3, was approached by the killer on I-35. Both men stopped their vehicles. The victim got out, took off, started running, but was shot several times on the highway. A bystander inside another vehicle was also hit. Police say that person did not suffer life-threatening injuries. Police are still looking for the shooter. Melvin Abdel Noble Jr., born May 31, 1992, better known by his stage name MO3, was an American rapper and singer best known for his 2019 collaboration, Everybody with Boosie Badass. MO3 was born in McKinney, Texas. Later on he moved to North Dallas, where he would be raised. His debut mixtape, Shot Is, was released in 2014. The same year, Mo3 released his single Hold Your Tongue, a remix of infamous Texas rapper Mr. Lacey, and resulted in him gaining buzz throughout the region. In 2016 Mo3 released Shot Is Reloaded, a project with numerous hits, that gained the attention of Boosie Badass, who at the time wanted to sign the artist. Growing up in North Dallas was rough, when it comes to the streets, and the hood there is pretty much like any other hood in any other city, as MO3 said himself. With that being said there was a lot of violence, and crime where he grew up, he had a lot of good and bad days growing up in the hood, and got into a lot of trouble. Growing up he had both of his parents around, but they were separated, but MO3 describes his father as a real one, and was always there for him. He also had one biological brother, but other friends he considered brothers, as they basically grew up in his mother's household, as they were eight in the family including his father in total. His mother was described as a neighborhood mama, as she was the one in the hood kids would run to if they ever ran away from their own homes. MO3 started getting into trouble early on in life, and already had his first gun at the age of 12 which was the time in his life he started getting more and more involved in life of crime, and the first gun he had was one he stole from his older cousin, although he did have the gun it was missing the clip. As a 12 year old he didn't know that a clip was missing, but walked around with it to scare people, because he was bullied out the streets as a kid, and wanted to be able to protect himself, but got caught by his mother and police, but there were no consequences as he was just 12 years old. It wasn't until he was 14, when he started going in and out of jail, and the first charge he had to answer for was aggravated robbery with deadly weapon, and has committed several aggravated robberies, and he was caught in the process, and was in juvie the first time for five months, and the second time he got caught, he got placement and has been spending time in basically every correctional facilities in Dallas. At the age of 17, things only got worse and got caught for aggravated robberies with deadly weapons that same year and went to DDC, and was his first time being tried as an adult, since the juvenile system didn't seem to work with MO3. At that time MO3 was facing 45 years in lockup, and during the trial process, his mother tried helping him out, but lost everything in the process, such as their house, car and everything to pay for a lawyer. His mother was risking her job for MO3, since he always got in trouble, his mom had to leave work which made her boss frustrated, since it affected her work, and had to leave. 
As the process unfolded it went from 45 years to 10 years, and MO3 only did 2 of the 10 years he was sentenced to, and did 8 years on probation. MO3 always had talent for singing and rapping, but was ultimately encouraged by his father to start making music, and that was during the time he was locked up in the county, and they talked about this during one of his father's visits, talking about what MO3 is gonna do, when he comes out. Since he wasn't good at school or anything else that he could think of, his father gave him the idea of rapping, since he knew that MO3 was into rapping. At first MO3 was in doubt, since he didn't believe that anyone who came from where he comes from, would ever be able to make it in music. His father just told him to tell his story in an authentic way, and see where it goes since he didn't have anything to lose by trying. Back in the day Dallas wasn't popping, in the business like today, so it was hard for him to see how he would ever become successful. MO3 didn't have any studio money back in the day, but had a cousin who had a studio, and rented it out for free to him, and that's where he started his journey on music. The song that made MO3 start popping locally, was Hold Your Tongue, which was a remake of Half Steppin', by Mr. Lacey, Big Chief, Mr. Pookie, and K-Rock, which is a Dallas classic, which the producer was hesitant on working with in the beginning since he was afraid that MO3 was going to ruin the song, and as it turns out the producer was wrong, since this was the beginning of a successful career of MO3, and later released the album Shot Is Reloaded, and it was from there his career exploded. MO3 was a part of a blood gang, and was known to be affiliated with 59 Bounty Hunter Bloods, or 282, and as he was rising up in the rap game, he became a target and problems from his past started to haunt him, and according to MO3 himself, he received messages on Instagram from people, claiming to have put a price on his head, for $30,000. He would get messages like that on the regular, and did not seem to be worried about it. At times he would express that he knew people would come for his life, which would unfortunately be the case later on. As for the gang he was affiliated with, 59 Bounty Hunter Bloods, the gang was originally established in 1969, but became well established by 1972 in Los Angeles. Whilst today it is a set of the Bloods, it was originally known as the Green Jackets. Gary Barker, and Bobby Jack are believed to be the set's founders. The gang is perhaps most known for its long-standing rivalry with the Grape Street Watts Crips, which has been described by gang experts as the most violent and long-lasting feud between two gangs that are in the Watts area. In 1992, the Watts truce was declared, which saw a rapid decline in violence between the two street gangs. However, by 2005, the truce had reportedly imploded with the homicide rate, increasing to at least seven. The bounty hunters later on spread into Texas, and in this context Dallas. MO3 would later on start to beef with other rappers, and people in general in his own city going back and forth on social media, and so on. One of his most known ops would be another big rapper from the same city, and goes by the name of Yella Beezy, who was another big rapper, coming out of Dallas. Yella born and raised in Oak Cliff, which was a troubled area as well, and has been known to having many murder occurring there. Like MO3, Yelly used to get himself in trouble a lot too, and it wasn't until he found music that changed for him, and got kicked out of school, when he was in 7th grade and started with music, since he had nothing else to do other than that. Yella Beezy struggled, as at the age of 12 his father got shot and killed outside their home on Mother's Day, and after that Yella got rolled up in the streets, and later got involved with the Rolling 60s Crips, which is also a gang originating from West Coast. At the age of 13 he started rapping, as he was inspired by rappers like Kevin Gates, and Boosie. At the age of 14 he released his first mixtape, called Mash Mode Overload, and later on the second one called Lil Yellow Mane, but blew up in 2015 with the track Trap In Designer, but the song that really made him break out was the track That's On Me.
Another rapper who is relevant in this story, is the rapper by the name of Trap Boy Freddy, who was in the remix of That's On Me, by Yella Beezy. Trap Boy Freddy was another big local name in the rap game of Dallas, and was affiliated with DF Dub, which is a gang he was a part of or formed around the age of 14. He apparently had a trap house by that age, and made serious dough before coming into the rap game, with an estimate of half a million dollars, which is a lot of money to make off the streets. Yella Beezy, and Trap Boy was very close friends, hence why he was featured in the remix song of Beezy. Hey, I love that. <laughs> okay, and I guess you had your first trap house at 14? Yeah, no, we were getting 14. Good old 14. So at 14, you got your own house that you're working out of. Yeah. Did, did any of this seem a little unnatural to you, to be that young and, and to be doing that? No, I, it really was, that was just the shit to do. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was doing it. As for Trap Boy and MO3, they used to be friends. Users online have been discussing the long standing feud between Trap Boy Freddy and MO3 over music, which has been fueled in the past on Instagram stories and in music. The two were both based in Dallas, Tex, and they were allegedly friends before their relationship soured. Both Trap Boy Freddy and MO3 would discuss one another in interviews and on their social media accounts. The speculations surrounding their issues were magnified when Trap Boy Freddy seemingly celebrated Mo 3's passing. Shortly after Mo 3 was shot on November 11th, Trap Boy Freddy began posting Instagram stories about how he was annoyed that the freeway was blocked. The area was closed off because of the shooting, which was speculated to be a mockery of Mo 3's death, but we'll dive more into Trap Boy later on this video. Another rapper who is relevant to the story is Goyeo, which is another rapper from Fort Worth, Texas, and is a rapper who came into the game back in 2014. Yeo was friends with MO3, and have worked on numerous projects together, and recorded tracks but that would not always be the case. Yeo would even perform with MO3 on stage, and did so with MO3, and Young Dolph, who brought Goyeo out to the stage with them. After this performance people speculated that there appeared to be some tension on stage, claiming that Yeo and his friends slash crew were trying to discreetly push MO3 off stage, and MO3 and his manager later left the stage. Even after this happened, MO3 and Go Yeo still got booked by clubs to perform side by side. A beef between the both allegedly brewed up later on, and has been rumored to have led to the death of an individual because of an altercation. Both MO3 and Yeo had with their two respective crews getting into it at a club, which I will dive into more later on. Beef between all of these respective rappers, and MO3 supposedly started because of jealousy, as most of them were cool in the beginning. But the beef started around the time the respective rappers started gaining buzz in the rap game. As you can see the rap game in Dallas or in any city is pretty competitive, and everyone wants to be at the top of their game and run their own city. One who made quite the noise being the king of Dallas, was Yella Beezy and beef with MO3, was cooking up at the time back in 2017 where MO3 talked about the both of them having some misunderstanding, but everything was good, as they talked things through, and solved their issues. Even though things between them was solved he was also claiming the throne of Dallas like Yella Beezy, and many others and didn't hesitate to express that. You know, a few other people, but I'm naming those artists because people knew about the situation. Um, but it seems as though now you and Yellow Beezy are cool. Yeah, they cool, you know what I'm saying? We, we, we had a misunderstanding. You know, it could be miscommunication a lot of times, you know. Sir, she was saying, he said some shit, I said some shit, but once we pulled up, I told him, pull up on me. I was in the cliff one day, I had just got back from Atlanta with Boosie. And I told him when I get back, come out let me and shit. Uh, he pulled up on me at Motown, you know, we chopped it up. We just got a whole bunch of misunderstood shit out the way, you know, that shit did. Now I be beating his ass, taking his money, you know, to connect for. Yeah. Any nigga won't see me in connect for, we, we been big money, like, now nah, real talk. $500. What was the situation? How y'all came in? It was just like, like you said, just like a some, uh, miscommunication. Uh, he say, she say. 
lot of bullshit. He called me one day and was like, uh, hey, well, yeah, just uh, this three, I wanna, wanna holler at you about something in your hood. I'm like, shit, where yeah. He told me where I can put up on. We hop in the car, chop it up by the hour. He tell me, ooh, 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 this. And I tell him this how this shit went on. He told me how this shit went on. It was even nigga a story when, you know what I'm saying, like a, a bitch was telling him, yeah, my old Cliff America nigga say you can't come to the cliff no more. They gonna kid, they gonna do some some lame ass shit. Yeah. And she wasn't even talking about me. <laughs> oh, I wasn't talking about him. I was talking about the other yellow bees. The bitch is only one yellow bees here. Like, he called me. Then an incident occurred that would heavily affect MO3 that went down in Fort Worth and is connected to the speculation that I mentioned earlier about MO3 and Goyeo having an altercation that led to the death of an individual by the name of Hector Wilkins, aka Lil Half, who was 31 years old and got shot in the torso a bit before 4 a.m. in a nightclub called The Phantom, which is the club that MO3 and his friends celebrated his birthday. MO3 would also later be arrested in connection with the shooting, as the alleged killer. He would be forced to spend over $90,000 in lawyer fees to get this handled. But the charges were later dropped. But as the charges dropped, so was MO3 by the label he was signed to Epic Records. In a track that MO3 later released by the name of True Story, in which he referenced the Fort Worth shooting, basically saying that he was a target that night, and nearly got killed and got blamed for a murder, he did not commit basically alluding to the situation being a setup, and since Fort Worth is the hometown of Goyeo, and the two seem to have some beef it is speculated that Goyeo, had something to do with it. According to the sister of the victim, who posted on Instagram blaming MO3, and Goyeo for the death of her brother. While MO3 went through all of this, and lost his record deal in dealing with the legal issues, his so-called ops or rivals in the rap game, were gaining more and more buzz climbing the charts. So then, so then in 2017, there was a shooting that happened at a nightclub. Mm. And uh, you got arrested for that. Mm. What were they trying to blame you for? A shooting. Okay, oh, so they were trying to blame you social for the media, actual shooting. Social media. It's still on social media to this day. If you... If you uh, if you type in on social, not, I ain't talking about YouTube and shit like that. Google, I'm talking about if you go to social media, you know, Facebook carry old posts. It, it's still like you know, it still say them old posts. You know how they it pop up in your shit like a memory. A lot of the memories pop up around that day, around that time. You get know what I'm saying? And I just look at the old posts when people were saying Mo three did this, Mo three did this, Mo three did this. You know, once somebody say your name so many times, you know this that's who they gonna come get. Okay, so you got arrested for that shooting. Yeah. Uh, what ultimately happened with that case? I mean, I mean it got it got dropped? It's over. It's over. No case. Okay. There's no case. As for the beef with MO3 and Yellow Beezy, it supposedly stemmed from a miscommunication. As I've mentioned earlier and according to Yellow Beezy, it was due to a woman telling MO3 lies about not being welcome to Oak Cliff anymore and that MO3 would get shot and killed if he was caught there and so on but would later according to both parties have been squashed and there was no more beef. As for Trap Boy he released a song alongside Yellow Beezy and Go Yayo in which all of these rappers MO3 was beefing with and with all of these up and coming rappers Releasing a track together without MO3, would be seen as a reason to cause more tension, and the track was called Pick 6, and when Mo was asked about why he wasn't on the track, he said that he didn't want to be on the track. Everybody pretty much knows it, man, like, you know, they came out with the Pick 6 record, you know, I don't want to... I don't want to be a part of it. But, 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 uh, let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but you do, and, and, and I'm, just, I'm not bad about no pics, eh? Yeah, but, but I'm just saying, though, <laughs> this, this is something that everybody knows is that you don't really involve yourself with the other Dallas artists, and that's what kind of makes people in, you know, the powers and shakers and the power, you know, the people who pull the plugs and shit like that in the city, they kind of look at you like, who do you think you are? Yeah, you know what I mean? And I don't know why they look at me like that, because they need like that, like, man, like I...
The fact that Mo was talking like that in the interview, saying what he said and laughing at it, caused Trap Boy Freddy to become upset with Mo, saying that Mo is salty because of the fact that he was cool with Goyeo, while Mo was still beefing with him and saw it as Freddy picking Yeo over Mo. I really mean it. Yeah. If it wasn't nothing towards me, you gotta say that, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, no, that was my nigga. And I vouch for him on every level. So, if it ain't the same, it ain't that. But, man, that nigga ain't talk shit since the Yayo shit. You hear me, Yayo? Yeah. Uh, the nigga Rain Water told me, you know what I'm saying? He wanted to be just, that, he was bad to be for still talking to Yayo, so that's what it was. Royal Lee who was a good friend of Mo, and a comedian later started beefing with Yella BZ too, and Roy Lee who was a comedian from Oak Cliff constantly dissed Yella, and at one point started roasting BZ constantly, wanting to fight as they had an altercation prior in which Yella or one from his crew sucker punched Roy Lee, and ran off. So I just want to clear this out, you understand know I me? Mean? This beef ain't got nothing to do with nobody else but Yella BZ and Roy Lee, you understand know I me? Mean? That's all. This, 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 little, this little boxing match ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. All these high side. What's up with them partners back there, Yellow? What's up with them dudes back there, man? It was an altercation. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> with Yellow Bees. <laughs> yeah, the glory. y'all had a fight. Yeah, no, nah, we ain't have a fight. So y'all just pulled some Soldier Boy and Chris Brown shit on Nah, there. right, we, we, he swung at me. I blocked the shit because I seen that my peripheral, yo. <laughs> but yo, whatever you call that shit, I pulled that bitch out my goddamn. Yeah, I seen that bitch out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One, two, three, four. You so did you, did you get ran what out? What So what happened? Did you get ran out the club? Like, what happened? Nah, they wanted their body. The bodyguard grabbed me. And then he pushed me, he was trying to take me out. And one of the, his partners, whoever Yellow Beast was with, heavy handed ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? He hit me in the back of my head. You know what I'm saying? I had a Cuban link chain. He, they snatched that. I wasn't tripping on the chain, but he snatched him in the back of my head. I'm just telling everybody to come out. Come out. Roy Lee was running his mouth about Yellow like crazy and talked recklessly on interviews, and on socials. According to speculation, him running his mouth like that led to him later getting shot in the leg, and would be taken into the ER, and seemed to be okay and recovering from the shooting. Two weeks after the shooting royally, would unfortunately die due to blood clot in his lungs, related to the gunshot wounds and would sadly pass away on October 13, 2018. This left MO3 really sad and broken as he had much love for his friend. This murder seems to be connected to Yella Beezy, as they had beef not meaning necessarily, he was the one who did it, but maybe that someone from his camp did, as Roy Lee according to Mo wasn't a thug, but just a comedian, and for him to get shot and killed is weird. Boy, right? Yeah, that's my dog. For, uh, and he, he passed away recently? Yeah. You don't know uh, where it happened, or? <clears throat> uh, he got, uh, yeah, he got shot trying to uh, get a deposit for a show. Uh, he was with his son. He had a son with him. Mm. Uh, somebody walked up and shot him through the car. Oh, he was sitting in the car when it happened? With his son. Yeah. With his son? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. When did you first hear about it, that he got shot? Right then and there. I went to the hospital. Oh, okay, so as soon as it happened, I went to the hospital. You went to the hospital and seen him? Yeah. Was he, uh, I mean, was he in bad condition or was he it looking good. like he was gonna make it? Yeah, he was good. He was good? He was straight. And so then it just, things just went bad and he didn't make it? Yeah. Damn. How long was he in the hospital before? Before he passed away? A couple days. A couple days? Yeah. Oh. Uh, he didn't, he didn't die in the hospital. He, uh, he got out the hospital. He got back on his feet, started moving around. He was back doing his shows and shit. He was taking his medicine, got a blood clot. Died from a blood clot. Only a few days after the passing of Royalty, Yella Beezy himself would be targeted in a shooting and is speculated to be connected to the murder of Royalty, as he was beloved by many in Dallas and someone would want to retaliate on anybody that could have anything to do with it. In this case, it being Yellow Beezy. Multiple 
multiple agencies are investigating the early morning shooting of a man driving on the Sam Rayburn Tollway. Louisville police say more than a dozen shots were fired into a 26 year old man's vehicle and several rounds struck him. Fox 4's James Rose has more on the investigation and who police are looking for. James. Right, Natalie, Louisville police detectives, along with state troopers and the North Texas Tollway Authority, are reviewing video and toll tag information, trying to get suspect information and piece together exactly what happened this morning. Louisville police say at 338 this morning they got a 911 call from a driver saying he'd been shot multiple times by someone in another vehicle in the northbound lanes of the Sam Rayburn Tollway at FM 544. Police say 26-year-old DeAndre Conway was shot three times and was still conscious and breathing when he was transported to a nearby hospital. Conway told investigators... He was on October 14, 2018, Yella Beasy got shot at over a dozen times on the Sam Rayburn Tollway, and Beasy was struck three times. Things didn't look good at the time, but Beasy managed to pull through and luckily stay alive. What supposedly went down was, Yella Beasy leaving the club late at night, and was apparently followed until later that night the car that followed him, pulled up alongside the car, and started opening fire towards Yella's car and his G-Wagon was wrecked as well, as he tried to get away, find his gun and ultimately crashed the vehicle, and ran off and fortunately made it from the shooting alive. After all of this the respective rappers continued to release bangers in the rap game, and were all looking to take over the Dallas scene, and take the throne they all believed they deserved. MO3 would later on started dissing his ops, but a song that stood out was the track 219, for the birthday of Royal E saying things like if he were to die today, one of his ops would get killed. Also saying first we hit up that rapper, and then we hit up that sprinter, which is a reference to a shooting at Trap Boy's sprinter, and even dissed Yella Beasy, and referenced the toll shooting. Go Yayo responded to this on Instagram saying that everything MO3 was claiming in the song, is all lies for clout, and that he basically used Royal E's birthday, as a bait to get more attention since Roy Lee was so beloved in Dallas. You making all this talking about you done hit sprinters up, boy. Stop playing with us. Oh, my mom shot the toe at, boy. You rapping good in the hole, boy. You need to cut it out, boy. Nigga, wipe your nose. On oh, Bowie, boy. If you really slime, then why you wipe your nose when you sneeze for fuck, nigga? Oh, my mom, it's gonna go over a lot of y'all heads. If you really slime, why you wipe your nose when you sneeze, folks? Nigga, let it drip, nigga. Trap Boy backed up the video Go Yayo posted, and that would ignite and back and forth between the two on social media. And Trap Boy later posted a video of someone who appeared to Mo, and Mo arguing and leaving as Trap Boy was claiming that he chased Mo3, and that Mo has been ducking Freddy for a year because he was supposedly scared. These claims made Mo upset, and he responded to it on Instagram, telling Freddy to post the full video, and saying that he was the one who pulled up to Trap Boy's hood. Also adding that the reason Mo left was due to the cops pulling up, and he challenged Trap Boy to post the whole video. Freddy responded that if Mo was really about that, then he should just pop out instead of talking on Instagram, and Mo responded again that same day. Basically saying let's go and express that it didn't make any sense for Freddy to tell him to pull up, when that is exactly what he did, and the beef continued from there. I knew you was gonna do that. You know why? I just left 97 on the beat. I just told them. I just told them on 97 9. This puss ass rapper gonna edit a video and try to post it for some clout. Nigga, post the whole motherfucking video, nigga, nigga, finna beat your motherfucking ass, nigga. Talking about running, scared of you, nigga. Did you tell him I'm in your hood? Did you tell him that? Did you tell him on the video that I pulled up in front of your motherfucking stove, nigga? In that shit, old in the bitch, that's a year ago, nigga. And you ain't wanna scratch. 
You ain't wanna look at me? They just banned me on Facebook, that's why I'm on here. Embo3 would later suffer another loss, as one of his friends would unfortunately get shot, and killed on March 13, 2019, as the victim and late friend of Mo, is James Browning Jr. aka Bubba, who got shot in South Dallas by the Dixon Grocery, at 3752 Dixon Avenue. Riddled with bullet holes. Uh, tonight, neighbors worry about crime after a man was shot and killed outside a southern Dallas grocery store. The gunfire erupted late last night in the neighborhood around Elsie Faye Higgins and Highway 352. News 8's Damon Fernandez is live at Dallas Police Headquarters. Um, Damon, what are the police saying about this? We know, Chris, right now, investigators back here are being very calculated about the information they release about this murder case. It has some neighbors around Dixon Avenue telling me they are very concerned about safety right now. They were hanging out here, just packed up here. It's crazy. It was right here outside Dixon. He was standing outside the store as a white van pulled up and two guys started opening fire towards Bubba. And as he was trying to run into the store, Bubba got struck multiple times, and as he got into the store he collapsed onto the floor, and instantly died. This was a heavy loss for Mo, and got dissed by his ops, as you would already expect and Go Yeo started saying that Mo3, is the one getting his friends killed for talking crazy on his music. Things would only get crazier from here, as the beefs were escalating in the Dallas scene. In 2019 at the Unruly Citizens Festival, both Mo and Yellow Beezy got booked at that same event, to perform in the same venue. Police talked to MO3 about not being allowed to be near Yellow Beezy, which led to MO3 getting arrested later that night, which Mo broadcasted. MO3 accused Yellow Beezy of getting Mo removed from the event, because he was scared. Some speculate that MO3 was never booked to the event to begin with. Mo3? Yeah, sir. Hey buddy, can you talk, talk to you over here real quick? Yeah. Thanks, man. What happened, sir? Yeah, sir. Oh, this, oh, this is your phone. This is his phone, that's sir. His phone? Okay, that's his phone. Okay. I mean, you what? weapons on you? Nah, sir, I got no weapons on me. Hey. Yeah, sir. Okay. Yeah. Can you hold on to your phone, all right? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. All right, so you, the reason why you being contacted, you might have some warrants out for you, man. Nah, sir, I ain't got no warrants. Okay. You got any ID on you? Nah, sir. You got no ID on you? I ain't going in the show if he in the building. I ain't going to do the show if he's still here. I told y'all it was a problem. My son fear for his safety. Y'all need to get him out of here. Okay, we're going to hit him with trespassing. Okay, we're going to hit him with trespassing. Sir, you have a warrant, sir. You, you're not supposed to be here. What? Well, I got a warrant. Oh, now I'm trespassing. Which one is it? Which one is it? I just can't do my... Yellow was saying that MO3 was never booked, and any flyer that said so was fake, and that the narrative Mo was running was just lies. According to Mo himself, some of the promoters of the event called Mo saying that someone didn't want him there, and Mo said there was no beef, but Yellow Beezy said the contrary. Fucked up and can't get booked nowhere, so y'all trying to play these stupid ass kumbaya game, making fake flyers, trying to get people to think that we cool and shit ain't sweet on this end. Ain't now nigga on, on the same motherfucker flyers me at all. Know what I'm saying? If you niggas really booked on a motherfucking flyer, show your contracts. Everybody gotta have contracts when you getting paid for a show, or you niggas doing free shows. If you was on the fucking show, why the fuck is you walking through the front of the building? Everybody know when you are artist, you walk through the back of the building. So why the fuck is you walking through the front of them if you own the show? Man, come on, man. You niggas playing motherfucking games, my nigga. Ain't nobody want even around the motherfucking vicinity of the motherfucking. So, this is what happened. I had a show in Kansas City. On my way to Kansas City, I was on the phone. Who I was on the phone with? I was on the phone with unruly citizens. That's who, you know, the concert at the Forest Center. Cool, put three on the show. Uh, what y'all doing right now? You know, shit, we, we on the road right now. I got a show tonight, I'm in Kansas City right now, matter of fact, as we talking, as we speaking. Okay, boom. <clears throat> you got a couple members of unruly, it's like a group of them. At first, you had three of them saying, okay, cool, it's good, it's good for the show. 
And then he got this one saying, I like saying he rap on that. Man, what you call it? Man, I don't know if that's a good idea, man. What you call it? It's calling us, calling us, saying they don't want to be on the show with them and whoop the whoop and all this. And, you know, we don't want to, we done already paid them and stuff. And, you know, we're just now adding you on. They just added me on. They did. That look at me with tattoos and a gun on his chain. I don't play with white people like that. I told the promoter, I'm good. I'm gonna do, you know what I'm saying? Book me, I'm gonna do my shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go in. I don't know nothing about no rap beat. He was like, Man, three, you, you, you for real? I'm like, Bro, I'm for real. All oh, my kids. Now, did y'all really think I just popped up out of somewhere? I was promoted on the radio, billboard ads. Future even posted me. Future page, when he promoted the show, see, they took me off. They waited till the internet started saying, he wasn't even on the show. They was like, oh, bet. The internet think he wasn't even on the show. Let us hurry up and go delete all the promotion we did of him. So I'm looking like, they deleted. Ah, you bitch. You. Later on, Mo was hungry for a fight with Trap Boy Freddy, and footage of an altercation outside his store was caught, and the trash talking and beef continued. Later on at the Dallas State Fair in 2019, a crazy brawl would take place. As Trap Boy Freddy and his friends caught MO3's manager Brandon Rainwater, Trap Boy was taunting Mo on socials yet again for this, and that would not be the last time that Brandon would get attacked on by Mo's ops. Later on in the year of 2019, more specifically December an unfortunate event would take place, as Mo would get shot in the head but fortunately survived the shooting, and quickly took it to Instagram to let his fans know that he was alright. He took it to social media as he was bleeding instead of rushing for medical assistance, but it would later turn out that the incident was fake, as it was for a music video he was shooting, and was a publicity stunt to promote his project. As I mentioned earlier as Brandon Rainwater got jumped, that wouldn't be the last time, as at the beginning of 2020, Brandon went to a popular club called V-Live, and as Brandon was waiting outside, he was spotted by Yellow Beezy and Yellabeezy approached with a security guard holding a gun, and Brandon ran off, and what is speculated to be Yellabeezy ran after him, and took him down to the concrete and started beating him up, and several people later joined in and jumped Brandon Rainwater together. For real. Brandon was struggling and trying to get out of there, but was instead thrown into the street, where a lot of cars were driving but luckily wasn't hit by any vehicle. Yella Beezy was later sued by Mo's manager, as he was severely injured with a dislocated hip. Mo later reacted to this, and took it to Instagram yet again. I don't know where it's cool at. Blood, I don't know where it's bull at. I don't know where it's tight, I don't know where it's in style. Fam. You can't J no, you can't J no nigga that's not like that, that's not cut like that, and ain't even trying to be like that. And think, oh yeah, yeah, that's how we riding, nigga. Know what's up? Ooh, hold up, real quick. Let me take a sip of this jewel. Pop my shit. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we had a thousand. Okay, come. Cool. Okay, look. Boom. Let me say this first off, <clears throat> so you understand. And I know when I do this shit, I do this shit. Let me tell you first off, rain water, rain water. Let me say his name, cause it, I, I keep saying. I keep I keep saying, what you call it beats up Mo 3's manager. First of all, I want y'all to understand that's the only way the views, the numbers, and everything gonna go up because it's got my name in the front of it. First of all, y'all taking it like a nigga whoop me or something. Nigga dodging me, nigga ducking me, nigga ain't even trying to be in no vicinity of me. I don't know why I'm a friendly rapper, but nigga know what's up. Anyway, listen, this ain't even about me. Mo would later release a track that disses his ops in the track called, I'm the Truth where he in the outro disses Trap Boy Freddy, calling him a backup dancer. Mo3 would not let things go, and the beefs were not looking to settle down anytime soon.
MO3 later took it to social media yet again responding to the fact his ops saying, he ain't like that, meaning Mo just acting like a gangster, when in reality he isn't according to his ops. MO3 started mocking Trap Boy, and BZ for attending funerals, and belittling them on socials, and also saying that Trap Boy, back in the day told Mo to leave Yellow BZ alone, because he ain't like that, back when Freddy, and MO3 was friends. Freddy later responded on several's posts saying MO3 is scared to move around in Dallas, and that he will get killed saying, once you pop out, you will be going up. The fuck is wrong with y'all stupid ass? He ain't like that. He ain't like, ain't like what? You bitches still keep going to funerals. Ain't like what? Shut the fuck up. But listen, bro. Everybody know y'all can still go, oh, bitch. I'm laughing at you every time, bitch. And you gotta come hard in that old weak ass shit. You niggas pussy. You talk about he ain't like that? Bro, the backup dancer I already used to tell me when I used to come to the hood, I used to come to y'all hood. Man, leave what you call it alone, bro. Leave my pop alone, bro. You know he ain't like that, bro. You know, and y'all pussy ass nigga gonna make a song talk, he ain't like that. Nigga, I'm the truth, nigga. Yeah, nigga. Hey, you talking about big old something, nigga, walking down the train. Bitch ass nigga. And then let me tell you this. It wasn't going to be long before something was going to go down once again, as there would be an incident later on at a nightclub yet again. But in Houston, Texas. In September 2020 a double shooting went down, and MO3 was the supposed target of the shooting. I will see you soon. And now to that breaking news out of Southeast Houston, it's where multiple people were shot outside of a club in a drive-by shooting early this morning. We've learned that authorities are searching for a very distinctive vehicle in connection to the shooting. This is all unfolding right now at a club off Cullen Boulevard and Idaho Street. Our Wilwan Belogan is there now with the very latest in the case. As MO3 pulled up to the club, someone was trying to shoot at Mo, but his crew would shoot back at a crowd and unfortunately two employees got shot. As a result of Mo's crew shooting back, in response to someone shooting at Mo and his crew, one of the employees got shot in the head and the other on the neck, but both of them luckily survived. Apparently according to Mo, Freddie got shot in the leg and got taken to the hospital, but acted like he broke his leg on a car accident on Instagram, and Mo3 started roasting him on social media as well. Freddy responded with a picture of a wound, and said that he was only grazed and calling Moa police for taking street things to Instagram, and people supposedly got locked up for opening his mouth. I cannot believe my eyes. Is my op laid up in a hospital talking about he got in a car wreck? Boy, I'm talking about you broke your leg. Tell these niggas you really got hit up. Yeah. Camping. You got hit up. Everybody know you got hit up when you went to the hospital. You tell the people don't record it. Don't put it out there. Because you want to think in the city you're untouchable. Now, it's pressure. Nigga talking about he broke his leg in a car wreck. You goofing. I bet your partner sitting up there looking like, bro, so he just gonna act like he ain't get shot? We Things were only escalating more and more, and this beef would not see an end of the road, without things getting real bad, and unfortunately only two months after the attempt on Mo's life, he would get caught by his ops, and would get shot and killed. On November 11th, 2020, he was driving on the highway, as he left a female friend's house in a black car followed Mo, and later killed him. A Dallas rapper was murdered outside of his car on I-35 near the Dallas Zoo. Hello, I'm Steve Eager. I'm Heather Hayes. It is a stark example of the city's struggle to control violent crime. Police say the victim, a hip-hop musician named Mo3, was approached by the killer on I-35. Both men stopped their vehicles. The victim got out, took off, started running, but was shot several times on the highway. 
A bystander inside another vehicle was also hit. Police say that person did not suffer life-threatening injuries. Police are still looking for the shooter. They ambushed him on the highway, which was caught on tape. And there was a busy traffic on the highway, so two men took their opportunity to go after Mo. As soon as Mo3 realized what was going on, he hit the brakes, and went out of the car, and walked behind the car, and went to the passenger door supposedly reaching for a gun. As Mo was reaching for a gun the two guys came out masked, and ran up to Mo with assault rifles, and Mo didn't have enough time to take his gun out, and instead went to run for his life on the highway. Although Mo ran as an attempt to save himself, he unfortunately failed to do so, and was struck by nine bullets and was dying in the middle of the highway. The authorities took some time to get there, so he would lay there on the middle of the highway for quite some time, but they would later get control of the situation picking him up. Trap Boy Freddy posted on Instagram only minutes after the shooting of Mo, and was driving on the same freeway as Mo got shot and killed. This was really suspicious according to some people, as some speculated that Trap Boy Freddy had something to do with it. Man, whoever got the freeway blocked out need to get y'all together, dog. God, Nick ain't get on the freeway. Man, Lord got the freeway blocked off all the way on poke, dog. The f they got going. Freddy also posted a picture, paying tribute to friends he has lost and also posted saying he should pop a bottle to seemingly celebrate the death of MO3. Mo's other ops, such as Yellabizi and Go Yeo also mocked the death of MO3 on social media. What's that? Uh, yeah, I got my brother's Now we covered it. He's that f***ing around. around. Better pop some bottles, bitch! It's bottle popping time. Half part of time. Butt naked time. The death of MO3 was very unfortunate, but would seemingly create a storm of shootings throughout Dallas, and supposedly eight shootings occurred within a week after the death of Mo, and according to authorities seems to be connected, since the rate of killings just started flying through the roof after the incident, on the freeway. Boosie would seemingly be dragged into the violence after as well as he usually collaborated with MO3, and visited Dallas often. Boosie went to Dallas, and paid tribute to Mo, who he cared for at a wake slash vigil, but as he visited Dallas, Boosie got shot in the leg, as he was sitting in a vehicle, when someone started shooting at the vehicle Boosie was in, he was taken to the hospital, and Boosie was treated and turned out fine. And then finally, DPD also addressed the recent crimes involving rappers that we've seen. If you remember, last Wednesday, rapper Mo3 was shot and killed on the highway. And then over the weekend, DPD sources told us that rapper Boosie was shot in the leg and that was in the hospital getting treatment. Now, today, when we asked DPD to characterize what was inspiring this violence involving rappers, DPD told us that they have reason to believe that a group of rappers got together made an album, then left one of those rappers off the album, and that rapper ultimately felt disrespected. And of course, when we get more information about that, we'll let you know. Chris? The authorities was working to find the killers of Mo, and the feds got more active, as shootings started spiraling all over the city. The authorities managed to arrest a suspect by the name of Quan Dontrell White, and was at the age of 22 at the time of his arrest. The authorities supposedly got a tip of White's involvement in the murder, and two days before the murder of Mo, Quan uploaded a photo with big stacks of cash, and a rifle which looked very close to the one on the picture of captured of the murder, with the caption of the post saying, he put a bag on him, now I'm up, which was circulating after the arrest of Quan, and was suspected to be about the, the murder of Mo3. After the fact, Quan was seen spending a lot of money on jewelry weeks after Mo's death, and the car he was seen using, was the car that was caught on tape at the scene of the murder, and it didn't stop there. Pictures of Quan, and Yella Beezy together was also found, which raised suspicions even more. Yella Beezy also posted a video on his social media, celebrating the new year in 2020 and 2021, he said that he was putting his haters in the dirt. Even though Quan and Yellabizi have been spotted together, 
Quan denied being associated with Yella in any way. As all of these things were going on after the brutal murder of MO3, his ops were getting looked into, as well very closely by the authorities. Yella would later be arrested by undercover cops, and five guns were found in the vehicle. Hey man, new year, new blessings, you understand me? We made through a hell of a year, you understand? Anybody that ain't for you, anybody that's going against you, anybody that's goddamn negative, you understand me, ain't bringing no positive by, you know, in the words of Gucci, put that ass in the dirt, nigga! Damn! For sure, you did! Let me go, let me go, take a toast to that, you did. Trap Boy Freddy would release the diss track, Laugh Now where he would mock Mo, for getting killed. And even though Mo has already passed away, that didn't stop his ops from dissing him. In the lyrics Freddy hints at being involved in Mo's killing, claiming that he is paying people to get others killed. After the arrest of Quan a second suspect, would be retrieved later on in 2021 by the name of Devin Maurice Brown, and was at the age of 28. Devin would supposedly be the one being upset, that Mo was with that certain woman, Quan later pleaded guilty to another gun charge, more specifically to a felony charge of unlawful possession of a firearm by a felon, and he was later sentenced to 105 months, and as for Brown there are no updates yet. The dissings and songs kept going, and as for Yellabizi, he got arrested yet again in which the cops found a gun in the car, and what looked like lean, but was a hand sanitizer, and was taken to jail but got out eventually. I went to jail and got arrested for hand sanitizer, not no drugs, bro. Let me tell you how desperate they is just for making a arrest. Like, the homie got a brand of hand sanitizer that looked like drink, but it say hand sanitizer on him. You know, just like how the girls got the eyelashes in the pill jar, but she got um, hand sanitizer in a drink bottle, and it say hand sanitizer on her. Police weren't trying to hear it. They thought I was trying to cover up everything. Like, so they took me to jail over hand sanitizer and the only reason they were charging me with the guns is because of the drug you know what i'm saying the girl even was she brought cases to the jail and her lsc and was trying to show them like you were paid they weren't trying to hear it they just wanted to take just make a risk so they got to run labs and everything so that's why they charged me with it with a felony right next unknown felony or whatever that is so that's why i went to jail i'm the first rapper that went to jail over hand sanitizer as for the killings it wasn't over, as only a short period after Yella got arrested, the brother of Quan White, got shot and killed and went by the name of Nerion Beasley, and was found dead in a car outside a house in Lancaster, Texas. This was immediately speculated to be directly involved with the passing of MO3, and the violence in the streets of Dallas, Texas wasn't looking to calm down anytime soon, and this story is another unfortunate turn of events people turning to violence in the streets, is such a crazy, and evil reality going on so many streets, and the list of people dying to street violence is endless, the takeaway of this video should be that this life isn't the way, and no matter the circumstances of your life, to find another way to solve your issues and fighting fire with fire is only gonna lead to more violence and destruction. This is everything for this video, thank you guys for watching.